us made the world. This is why we say it's our creator who designed all of these things. Okay? And our creator will be unlike us, different than us. If the creator was like us, we'll also share the same deficiency. So the creator cannot be like us. All of us have to depend on something that is independent. Our creator, we say, is therefore independent and self-sufficient. Didn't have a beginning, cannot have a beginning, has to always be there. So when I ask you, why aren't you a Muslim? Your heart is a Muslim already. Your eye is a Muslim. Your stomach is a Muslim. It follows away the law that the Creator put. What it's required from you is you in total, totality with your soul to say, yes, I am going to willingly submit to my Creator. And at that point, you can say, I am a Muslim. Individual parts of you are Muslim already. Yeah? That's why I asked you, how is your Islam going on? Yeah? Because your heart is doing its job. It's a good Muslim. It's beating, beating, beating. As we are talking, as we are talking now, are you telling your heart to beat? No. So it's a good Muslim. It's so doing what, its job. So what, what is the difference between the evolutionary aspect of the Muslim thought and you know the Christian thought? Because neither really believe in evolution. So what's, what's the difference? Evolution is a process which requires an agency with intelligence to drive it. Yeah? So even if evolution, as they say, scientists say today, this is how it happened, it still needs a agency to drive that process, to program this process. Who has the power and the will as a minimum requirement? Ability and the will to do it. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Yeah? So evolution doesn't deny or disregard the existence of a God. Just because you know how this phone is made, if you are a phone engineer, hardware engineer, does that mean the phone came, came by itself? No. It doesn't. You just know the process. Yeah? So likewise, if you learnt about this universe, how it's operating, how there is laws of motion, yeah, laws of gravitation. It doesn't mean no one put it there. It means you just learned how things work. But it doesn't exclude a lawgiver. It doesn't exclude a maker, a creator. So in that sense, Christians and Muslims, they both believe in the existence of God, who is in control of everything, whether driving the whole process by evolution or special creation Still, God, the Creator, is ultimately in charge and controlling the affairs of all the world. Can you even imagine, for example, um, the balance of nitrogen and oxygen in air that we breathe in? If that wasn't in that proportion, do you know we're going to die? Because we can't have all of this different, like, imagine it was just, you know, 0.1% oxygen and just that, all the rest nitrogen or something else. We'll be able to live properly. If the water wasn't the properties of, I'll tell you about little water. Do you know water is actually from the family of alcohol? People don't know that. It's a family from the alcohol chemically. But it goes against the properties of alcohol in various respects. Okay? Yeah. Yeah? So water, even though it's HOH, H2O you've heard? Yeah. H2O means two hydrogen, one oxygen. But it's actually H with OH. Yeah? So if you have alcohol, CH3OH, CH3CH2OH, all this methanol and ethanol, this is OH family of alcohol. Okay? So it behaves differently. For example, it has a specific temperature of boiling, and it boils and it freezes. After a certain temperature, look what happens. You know, when you go in a frozen area, you see the water freezes at the top and guess what there is still water unfrozen behind or underneath the ice so that fishes and aquatic organisms can live okay? amazing the water it's you know degrees it boils and evaporates and so on it cools down it's unlike anything else this is like precision engineering to make life 
possible. If the water didn't have that property, life wouldn't even exist. That's why you'll be surprised to hear the Quran talks about that God, the Creator, brought every living thing from water. If it wasn't from water, which act as the medium in which life can thrive, all chemical reactions happen in water. Even for, for our small, without this, you can't have a chemical reaction happening. So life, for example, your cells and everything like this, without water, we won't be living. Even though our life is carbon-based, carbon-based, but you need water. That's why scientists, Jonas, do you know what scientists look for when they want to know whether there was life in a moon on Mars or someone else? Water. Were there any signs of water? Yeah. So the Quran talks about this. Quran is a divine guidance, a book that we believe has been given from our Creator how to live our life and to understand the purpose of our creation. For example, imagine you woke up one day and you saw yourself in a train compartment and no one else is there. So you can see all seats are empty. So you walked and went to the other parts. It's a... Is it called glaciers or whatever? It's like um, tinted. You can't see the other compartment. Okay? So you can't see what's there. Who is there on the other one? And it's going straight. So you can't see the train bending to so see someone else. So you went backwards. Same thing. Tinted. So you're all by yourself and you are there. You're saying, what am I doing here? I slept last night in my comfortable bed, in my comfy bed. And I'm waking up here. Where am I? What am I doing here? Where am I going? You look outside, it's not familiar anything. It doesn't look like England. It doesn't look like London. It doesn't look like UK at all. You're going through. Everything is frozen, ice. You can see the traces of trees, no leaves, all ice. But you, you were sleeping when it wasn't frozen winter. It was like January, like 12 degrees today. There is no snow, there is no ice on the ground. And you wake up on this train, you're asking yourself, would you say, oh, who cares? Let me just enjoy and then you've got your bag. Oh, my bag there as well. Oh, nice fruits and sandwiches. You start eating. And then it finished. And then now you're saying, I have no more food left. Are you still gonna not think, how did you get here? What are you doing here? Where are you going? Or are you going to simply think, let's have some fun? 12 hours later, when you realize you want to go to the bathroom, there is no bathroom. You're going to now start thinking, well, where am I? What am I doing here? There's no bathroom. You're going to eventually start thinking, how did I get here? What am I doing here in the first place? And where am I going? These questions will come to you. For sure. So when you are here in this life, Jonas, it is also necessary and meaningful and reasonable to ask, where did I come from? What am I doing here? And where am I going to go? Isn't it reasonable? Because did you exist 500 years ago? You haven't got a clue. Because you know your mom and dad told you you were born on this day, so you are about this, this years old. And you know you're going to die because everyone else is dying. And you have this confidence that, you know what, I'm going to die as well. Like, like, there's no reason for me to believe that I'll live forever because everyone else is dying. Yeah? So you will be asking, then, where am I going after I die? These questions, we should not leave this for later and get ourselves busy with having fun with girlfriends and boyfriends and restaurants and foods and movies and music and so on because they're not going to help us to answer those questions do you agree yeah i appreciate you thank you Mansoor, right yeah nice to meet you man i appreciate it thank you.